The 15th most common question asked by the non-Muslims is, in Islam, why are two women witnesses equal to one man's witness? Indicating that Islam degrades the woman. Let me tell you that the Quran, in no less than five places, talks about witnesses without mentioning the gender, whether male or female. Except in one place, the Quran specifies and says that two women witnesses is equal to one witness of man, and that is in Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number 282, which is the longest ayah, longest verse of the Quran. It is the part of the longest surah of the Quran, Surah Baqarah, and the verse number 282 is the longest verse of the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that, Ya listen, Amanu, O you believe, when you involve in any financial transaction involving future obligation for a fixed period of time, put it down in writing and get two men as witnesses amongst yourself. It further goes and says, if you can't find two men, then one man and two women. And it continues, if one of them errs or makes a mistake, the second will correct her. Now this verse of the Quran is exclusively talking about financial transactions and nothing else. Let me give you an example for better understanding. For example, if someone wants to undergo a surgery, maybe a major operation, the best for him would be that he takes the advice of two qualified surgeons. It is the best for safety. If he can't find two qualified surgeons, at least one qualified surgeon, MS or MCH, and two MBBS doctors. Because an MBBS doctor cannot do a major surgery. You can't have four MBBS doctors and do the surgery. Best would be two qualified surgeons who are master of surgery. If you can't find two qualified surgeons, master of surgery, at least one master of surgery and two bachelor of surgery. Similarly, in financial transaction, because in Islam, the financial burden is put on the shoulders of the man in Islam. The woman need not look after any financial burden. In Islam, before a woman is married, it is the duty of the father and the brother. And after she's married, it is the duty of the husband and the son to look after a lodging, boarding, clothing, and all financial aspects. So because of this, if it's an Islamic society, a man is more financially aware as compared to a woman. Because of this, in financial transaction, when you take witnesses, take two men. If you can't find two men, then one man and two women. Because if one of them errs, the Arabic word is tazil, makes a mistake. Some people translate it as if one of them forgets. It's not forget. It is if one of the women makes a mistake, the second will correct her. There are several verses in the Quran which talk about witnesses without mentioning the gender. For example, Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 106 to 108, that if death approaches you, put the will, the inheritance in writing and take two witnesses. The gender is not mentioned. Quran says in Surah Talaq, chapter number 65, verse number 2, that when someone gives talaq, take two witnesses. The gender is not specified. Should be honest, should be just. Gender is not specified. Quran says in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 4, that if someone lays an allegation against the modesty of a woman, produce four witnesses, otherwise, 80 lashes. Four witnesses doesn't specify the gender, whether it's male or female. If you cannot get four witnesses, and if you make an allegation against the modesty of a woman, 80 lashes. And one verse of the Quran is explicitly clear, which equates one male and one female. In Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 6 says that if someone lays an allegation against the spouse, or the husband lays an allegation against the wife, and he does not have any evidences, no witnesses, his solitary evidence is sufficient, and he has to take oath four times in the name of Allah, and fifth time pronounce a curse on him if he's lying. Immediately the next verse, after verse number 6 and 7 of Surah Nur, 
Surah Nur chapter 24 verse number 8 says, but if the wife, if she also does not have any witnesses, she too can be a solitary evidence by taking oath four times. And the fifth one, being a curse on herself if she's dying. So here, it is clearly mentioned in the Quran that one female is equal to one male. So based on this, most of the fuqahas and the jurists, they agree that only in cases of financial transaction, witnesses of two women is equal to one man. And some jurists say that in cases of murder, where the nature of the female may be difficult for her to give evidence, maybe two women is equal to one man. But all the other cases, one woman is equal to one man witness. For example, in the starting of the month of Ramadan, in the sighting of moon, you require one witness. In the ending of Ramadan, you require two witnesses. It does not make a difference whether it's a male or a female. Only in some country it has to be a man, should have a beard of the standard fist, then only can you take the witness. And I have one more strong argument that the beloved wife of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. She has narrated no less than 2,210 ahadith. 2,210 ahadith. And she was the only witness. So 2,210 say hadith, which are basis of the Sharia, is a witness only of one woman. She was the wife of the Prophet. Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. So this clearly indicates that one witness of woman is equal to one witness of man. There are cases in which how in financial transaction men is preferred to women. There are certain cases in which women witness is taken, men witness is not taken. For example, while giving the burial bath of a female Muslima, witness should be a woman. A man cannot be a witness. Unless in certain conditions where it's a forest and there are no human beings, then the husband can be. But otherwise, generally, for the burial bath, for the janaza, Gusul of a woman. The witnesses accepted of a woman, not of a man.